Hello guys and girls, Voices from the Dark here. We've just obtained an IBN 5100, so let's check it out. According to Darius Research, the IBN 5100 weighs 25 kilos. For now, we'll leave it on the shelf in the development room. We carry the cardboard box to the room, half dragging it. Karisu follows. Can you show me the phone wave? Indeed I can. Want to experiment? Mm -hmm. You haven't been able to send another email to the past yet, right? Do you know why? I can only shake my head. Let's run some tests. Carissa looks around the development room. Man, you have a ton of junk. It's not junk! Since you're new to the Future Gadget Laboratory, I'll explain. These are the glorious fruits of our science. The Future Gadgets. Future Gadgets 1 through 7 are stored here. The phone wave, with which you are already familiar, is gadget number 8. Future Gadgets, huh? Carissa casually picks up Future Gadget 4, Moed Snake, up from the shelf and stares at it. Hey, isn't this... a weapon? Future Gadget number 4, Moed Snake, designed after a Claymore landmine, is an instant humidifier. How confusing. Insert water and turn the power on, and in mere seconds it generates a thick cloud of steam. So it's junk. I thought so. Kurisu sighs and returns Moad's snake to the shelf. I'm borrowing this. Without waiting for a reply, she grabs Daru's never-worn lab coat from the shelf and puts it on gallantly. Wow. Hello there. Whoa! It's just not right without a lab coat. Overcome with emotion, I seize Carissa's hand and grasp it firmly. Hey! Assistant, you get it, don't you? <laughs> K -k get what? Let go! If you're gonna do science, you need a lab coat, right? I told Dar over and over, but he wouldn't wear one. But my assistant is different. She put it on before I even said anything. I knew you were meant for this, Christina. You're the best assistant a mad scientist could ask for. I don't know if that's supposed to be a compliment, but it's coming off as an insult. Now let go! She shakes off my hand and turns her back to me. I'm giving you that lab coat to commemorate your joining the lab. I don't... Don't worry, it's never been worn. Or maybe this fateful encounter between you and that lab coat was decided by destiny long ago. Daru not wearing it was just another inevitability. This is the choice of Stein's... Shut up so we can start the experiment! That's... Karizu thrusts both hands into her lab coat's pockets, then bends down to look at the time machine, now placed underneath the table. The previous experiment broke the table and even left a hole in the floor. There's a danger that will happen again if we successfully reproduce the discharge phenomenon, so unfortunately we'll have to leave it on the floor for now. So you haven't tampered with the microwave at all? I point to the X68000... There is code on the screen. It's in terminal mode now. We can change the factory settings like this, make the microwave do things its manufacturer never intended. How was it set when the discharge phenomenon occurred? Nothing out of the ordinary. It was at factory settings. Hmm. I'll take a banana. The bunch of bananas only has three bananas left. Those are Mayuris. Oh, so I don't need your permission then. I'll go buy new bananas tomorrow. Carissa takes one banana from the bunch, squats down and places it inside the phone wave named subject to change. She begins to type on her phone. She pushes send and the phone wave named subject to change begins to turn backwards. After 120 seconds, the chime rings. Nothing happened. The banana still in the microwave, unjellified. Ow! Carissa yelps as she tries to take out the banana and quickly draws back her hand. She starts blowing on her fingers. It's hot! Meaning the microwave functioned normally. This proves that the hidden function Mayuri found wasn't a freezing function, but we knew that already. Undaunted, Carissa throws in a new banana and once again begins reverse rotation for 120 seconds. But the second banana warms up too. We can't reproduce the jellification phenomenon, much less send mail to the past. What does this mean? I guess what happened earlier was an irregularity after all. 
I don't know if it's an irregularity or not, but we ought to investigate the cause. I agree. We agree for once. But Carissa's motives and my motives are probably the exact opposite. My assistant here wants to disprove my theory that the phone wave named Subject to Change is, in fact, a time machine. In the previous experiment, after spending 120 seconds in the phone wave named Subject to Change, the banana teleported back to the bunch jellified. We should consider that it returned to its state 120 seconds before. Wrong. If it returned to its state 120 seconds before, it wouldn't be jellified. So she wants to say that because it was jellified, it didn't travel back in time. The chicken returned to its frozen state without jellifying. That logic is dubious. Sure, it ended up frozen, but did you examine the possibility that it might have been jellified first? No, I didn't. I think Mayuri ate the refrozen chicken. Salt didn't jellify. You mean nothing changed? After the discharge phenomenon occurred last time, we spent all night experimenting with cabbage, radishes, rice, cognac, melon bread, crunchy kun, and cup noodles. Nothing happened. A brand of popsicle, popular throughout Japan. In addition to the standard soda flavor, over 50 varieties are sold, including cola, grape, and limited promotional flavors. Win may be written on one part of the stick. A winning stick earns a free popsicle. The chances of winning are rumored to be around 2%. Wow. The same thing with liquids. On that day, our success rates took a 180 degree turn. Before the discharge phenomenon, everything succeeded. After the discharge phenomenon, everything failed. Something must have changed. Is the microwave storing electricity? You said that jellified objects became fractal structured, right? Salt is a simple structure by nature, so maybe that had an effect. But how could electricity be related? Here, we should think under the assumptions of time travel theory. No, it's not good to start thinking from the conclusion. You've already had several successful experiments. You can't deny that. I'm not, especially con I'm not especially concerned whether this thing is a time machine or not. To begin with, it's physically impossible for this tiny little microwave to produce energy equivalent to the Big Bang. Carizu frowns deeply. We can't reproduce the discharge phenomenon, nor the fractalization. There should be a reason why. We haven't changed our methods, we haven't changed the settings, we haven't changed the experimental subjects either. There must be some other variable. Maybe it's the one who observes it. What do you mean by that? Quantum theory. The observer is an important element to the experiment. There were four of us here when the discharge phenomenon occurred last time, but before that it occurred when ashita san was alone. Each time fractalization occurred. There were either two or three people observing. You and I each saw both phenomena. In other words, the conditions haven't changed. In that case... Hmm... Hmm... Must be some other variable. Well, you did move it under the table, I don't know how much of that would play into the whole thing. It's on the tip of my tongue. And I hear a rumbling sound from Carissa's stomach. <laughs> That's... Hungry? Shut up! I haven't eaten anything since lunch. Carissa turns away as she looks at her watch. It's already eight? Just eat a banana. But only one of the two we just warmed. They are, after all, the fruit of our experiments. Or you could take something from our stock of cup noodles. Dots. Don't want any? Well, since you've lived in America for so long, I guess you prefer fast food instead. <laughs> cup noodles. What? I'll have cup noodles. Cup noodles? What flavors? There's soy sauce flavor and chicken flavor. Chicken. She seems in the mood to eat. Also, do you have a fork? Oh, typical American. I should say typical non-Asians. <laughs> Damn. It's past midnight. At 8 o'clock, the two of us silently ate cup noodles and warm bananas. Dara said it didn't want any, and ever since then we've been examining the phone wave named Strapit to Change. Although Dari probably didn't mind Makisa Kurisu talking about a warm banana in her mouth. I mainly focused on the terminal mode settings through the X68000. The programs Dari wrote are all wizard class though, so I can't understand most of them. An insanely skilled hacker. 
Kreese has been examining the AC adapter. Oh, come on, look at this place. So filled with junk from the, um, Mayuri's awful, awful fascinations with stupid stuff. And it lab's electrical switchboard for a while, though we stopped her when she tried to disassemble them. It's early morning and she still shows no sign of leaving. Where's she staying anyway? She's been in Japan for one or two months and she did say she was going back to America this month. The trains aren't running this late, so I guess she might not be able to leave even if she wants to. But in that case, why didn't she leave before the train stopped? Don't tell me she has plans to stay. No girls have ever stayed over at the lab. Mayuri has a curfew, so she always goes back home to Ikibukuru. Daru and I frequently stay here, though. It's not an exaggeration to say we live here half the time. Maybe it's normal for American girls to stay overnight in labs. <laughs> uh... Christina, is it okay to stay here this late? Perhaps you should contact your family. No need. What? Do your parents let you do whatever you want? Carissa turns to me and sighs. I haven't seen my father in seven years. My mother's in America. I'm living in a hotel right now. I understand? What? Living in a hotel? Well, true, renting an apartment for just a month is absurd, but... You damn celebrity! If you're American, then you should at least use a motel instead of a hotel, right? I'm not American, and there aren't any motels in the heart of Tokyo. What sort of hotel? What do you mean? It's a normal hotel in... Okonomisu. Okonomisu? Then you can walk there from here, can't you? Sure. I see. That's why she's so flexible with her schedule. I finally understand. So, tell me about your father. Sorry? You said you haven't seen him in seven years? Why do you care about my father? You're the one who mentioned him. Isn't that basically a hidden message saying, please give me some advice about my father, please? You're crazy. You're my assistant, and I can't let my assistant have any worries. So tell me everything that's on your mind. Dots. Kurisu pouts and says no more. Instead, she glares at the circuit box on the wall. What's wrong? I have nothing to say to you. Oh, I know. Your father was a hero, but then he fell to evil, and now he wears a black mask and cape and goes, he co right? And in the future, you two are destined to fight, and... Dots. I think I heard Carissa's teeth grind. <laughs> You're really mad at me, aren't you? Don't make fun. Carissa doesn't look me in the eye, but her low voice tells me how mad she is. Of people's family issues like that. You're trampling on my heart. Uh, Dots? Could her father's situation be a landmine? You think? Maybe I should apologize. I try to think of the words, but before I can say anything... HELL YEAH! Dara's war cry echoes through the lab. Did you get it? Mission complete. Dara shows his white teeth and a wide grin as he gives a thumbs up. I got the server admin's ID and password. Now we can peep as much as we want. Yahoo! And the, and the IBM 5100 database? That's separate, duh. The server admin's unrelated. I mean, it's a database with normally unreadable code, so there's a limit on who can access it. Does look like even the lab director can access it. There are positions higher than that? There's something called the CERN Executive Council. Yeah. Hmm, so they call it a council, eh? What about it? It's a fitting name for our enemy. Dots. Carissa looks at me coldly. Whatever. Let's leave the IBN <gasps> 5100 database for another day. Run a search on for data on time travel research. Okie dokie, that C program we saw last time was suspicious, wasn't it? That and the Jellyman's report. We couldn't get concrete information on either before. Kreisha stares holes into the monitor. Her angry expression has disappeared. Look carefully and burn it into your eyes. The proof of CERN's actions, its deceit upon the world. Oh yeah, baby! Found the LHC project supervisor! The supervisor? That's a pretty important post. Right now we're peeking inside his computer. C program, C program, hmm. C obviously stands for jelly. 
Zeri. Jelly starts with J. J E L L Y. Careless mistake. So uncool. Ahem, <clears throat> what I meant to say is that there's no way it would have such a simple name. The name's hiding something important. There has to be a double meaning. Daru, who's been searching through the log, suddenly stops. Got it! He displays a graphic on the monitor. It looks like a scan of a very old paper document. The letterhead reads, C program, top secret. The program began in 1973. When was CERN formed? 1954. Uh, 1954. I asked Daru, but Karizu answers instead, her tone flat. I thought that maybe CERN was formed with the C program in mind, but 54 means my guess was off. When was the IBN 5100 put on the market? 1975. So maybe that's why the IBN 5100 was central to CERN's operations. The years match, after all. No, that's wrong. It can't be something as stupidly simple as that. There has to be a worldwide conspiracy involved. Maybe IBM hid their proprietary programming language in the IBM 5100 for the sole purpose of its use in CERN's C program. IBM and CERN are co-conspirators, and both of them are being manipulated from the shadows by an even larger organization. Yeah, that's way more interesting. Uh, JPEG? Come on, I can't copy-paste this. Daughter mutters some complaint. Hmm, the text isn't in French. What's on screen right now looks like English. Actually, there's French, Dutch, and German versions, too. The content looks the same, though. CERN's purpose heading into the 21st century shall be to establish control over space and time, thereby to enable the destruction of extant history and the creation of an everlasting utopia ruled by the committee that encompasses the entirety of past and future events. <laughs> Carizo suddenly starts speaking at a stilted clip. She knows English. Well, was she just joking there? Because that sounds insanely sinister. Oh right, Makizo, she can do English! Way to go, assistant! Your study abroad in America was all for the sake of today, wasn't it? Of course not! Stop assigning people roles in your fantasy worlds. Dora relinquishes his chair. Relinquishes his chair, allowing Carissa to sit in front of the computer. In order to maintain this project's secrecy and to allow its name to remain relevant in changing circumstances, we designated the C program. Should I say C or should I say Z? They're both, like, correct, aren't they? Because someone would say Day Z, Day Z. Well, I like C, because Z sounds... It's too much work. C, like the Greek Omega for the... Or the Cyrillic Ya? It is forbidden to assign any meaning to this name or to seek it in significance beyond the project itself. Negative returns are predicted... Negative returns are predicted should this edict be violated. The C program is a top secret project spanning international borders. Like electromagnetic wave research, it has been approved for top priority funding by the Committee of 300. Henceforth, all other research performed by CERN shall function to keep the C program's existence secret. I guess Carissa is reading the preface to a document. It's getting rather dull. Is there anything specific about what exactly the C program is? Daru types on the keyboard from the side, bringing up another window. Hmm, uh, here! This can't be! Carissa bends forward and stares wide eyed at the words on the screen. What is it? The purpose of the C program is to perform time space displacement experiments by means of high energy proton proton collisions. Time space displacement experiments. In other words, time travel! I have to struggle to keep from shouting, although I kind of did just shout. I quickly run over to the window and close it. It might make it hotter inside, but it would be worse if people outside overheard us. No way. It was true? You're telling me they've been deceiving the world for nearly 40 years? Just as I suspected, a great shadow lurks behind CERN, most likely the organization or one of its puppets. What organization, you chunibu nutjob? At least try to be serious some of the time. Huh, <laughs> don't be ridiculous. My words are always grounded in truth. Anyway, shouldn't it be the committee instead of the organization? That's what it says here. The committee of 300? I don't think they mean CERN's executive council. What are they talking about? 
What are they talking about? The Unseen Masters, a secret organization rumored to ma manipulate the world behind the scenes. Some believe that the many secret societies spoken of by conspiracy theories are all merely puppets of the Committee of 300. One theory states that the Committee of 300's ultimate goal is to establish a one-world government. With the exception of the elites, the world's population will be reduced to one billion, and that remaining one billion will be enslaved. That sounds fun! The world is full of lies. It's not as beautiful as you think. Listen, Okarin. I am listening. The Committee of 300 is a dark power that controls every secret society, every government, every multinational corporation. You're making things up again. It's the truth. Google it if you don't believe me. Until now, the human race, for all its accomplishments, has never been able to overcome the barrier called time. The technology of time travel, which can break through that barrier, will change the course of human history. Literally. As it was when we split the atom, this forbidden fruit has the potential to grant us godlike power. Not a man exists who can resist its temptation. And naturally, all those with power will use any means at their disposal to obtain it. Human morality is not but a joke to those who would stand with the gods. Understand, Christina? Wow, that was quite a speech. Since you seem to know so much about it, does that mean you're aiming for godhood too? What Hoi and Kiyuma desires is the destruction of all who would call themselves God, the collapse of their hateful system, and a glorious new age of chaos. <laughs> I'm not asking Hoi Yin, I'm asking Okabe. I am. I. I am Hoi Yin. In other words, you don't have your own reason. Damn you, assistant! How dare you attack my very identity! Forget about him, Makizashi. Please keep reading. Daru, what do you mean forget about me? I'm tired of listening to conspiracy theories. I'm more interested in the C program than in your delusions. I told you they're not delusions and they're not theories. But Daru does have a point. Our top priority now is to expose the dark side of the international research organization known as CERN. Continue, assistant. At least show respect when you're asking a favor. Though huffing out complaints, Carice obediently goes back to translating. Um, stage 1. Construction and implementation of the Large Hadron Collider. A device that accelerates charged particles in order to research the reactions that results when such particles collide. The type of particles accelerated also determines the name of the equipment. In recent years, most high-energy accelerators have been synchrotrons, synchrotrons, ring types. Ring type accelerators are very expensive to build, but they can perform the most effective experiments. The reason for the ring shape is that charged particles can be sent through an electromagnetic field to bend their trajectory through the Lorentz force. The world's largest syn synchrotrons, other than CERN's LHC, are located in the US, the UK, and Japan. Alright. Over the past half century, beginning with the proton synchrotron it completed in 1959, particle accelerator technology has reached a point where standardized results may be obtained. Stage 2 Implementation and Testing of Lifter Technology. The formation of more than two artificial localized singularities, as well as the formation of curved black holes, will become possible when this stage is complete. In order to hide the program's true goal, it is necessary to intentionally leak misinformation regarding the formation of black holes. Stage 3 Animal Experimentation. Stage 4 Kuisha stops talking. Is it human experimentation? She takes a deep breath and finally mutters angrily. Human experimentation. For real? A chill runs up my spine. I admit it, some part of me still saw this as a game. I was elated to discover that an institution as respected as CERN was actually doing time travel research. After all, we ourselves had succeeded, whether by chance or design, in producing our own time travel phenomenon. I thought that maybe we could use that we could beat CERN to the first functional time machine design. Now wouldn't that be something? But now? Just like I said to Kurisu, the world is full of lies. Morals are meaningless. Was it really okay for us to get involved in this? Hey, Okarin, remember when we hacked in before? I'm pretty sure that email we read said this. Result error. Human is dead. Mismatch. 
For details, see the Jellyman's report. Dots. Someone died? Could that have something to do with human experimentation? My throat goes dry. Cold sweat seeps through my brow, and it's not because of the heat. Kurisu and Daru are waiting for me to speak. Are they entrusting the decision to me? I ask myself, is this really okay? Are you sure? There's no turning back. True, but I can live with myself if I... But can I live with myself if I ignore this conspiracy? Daru, look up the Jellyman's report. Really? Really. But first, Christina. Eh? You should leave. Why are you suddenly... The Jellyman's report. It just gives me a bad feeling. Once we see it, we can no longer return to our normal lives. You're a genius. You're already published, for crying out loud. There's no need to throw away your promising future. Are you worried about me? Of course I am. You're my assistant, after all. I keep telling you I'm not your assistant. Thanks for your concern. But I'm not leaving. We need to expose this truth to the world. No, it's too dangerous! You're chickening out? We're powerless against this conspiracy. One wrong move and they'll have us erased. But still... This isn't a game! I'm not joking here. Dots. Fine. I won't tell anyone. Though her expression shows she still doesn't agree, she finally submits. But I'm not leaving. It'll keep me awake at night. You won't regret this? I won't, she declares firmly. I don't know if it's her competitive spirit or if it's her bravery, or if she's just ignorant to the ways of the world, but it doesn't look like I can persuade her to back down. <sighs> what about you, Daru? Prepared? Well, I am a super hacker. He's comfortable even in this situation. And with my skills, they'll never know we were there. That settles it. It's good that Mario is not here. I can't get her involved. I looked Daru and Karisu in the eye. Alright. Let's begin. Karisu gives the seat to Daru. Henceforth, they shall be known as Operation Leagarn's Chest. In Norse mythology, it's a gigantic chest protected by nine locks that contains the cursed sword Leviathan. I hadn't actually heard about that tale. Boop. Why Norse mythology? Is that Norse mythology? Because it's cool, I guess. Anyway, what is it with men in military terms? Daru, begin the operation! He soon finds the Jellyman's report. He required a second password authentication, which Daru broke through easily. Ready? I'm opening it. Daru looks at me and Kurisu. I wet my parched lips and nod. The air in the lab suddenly seems thicker. Unable to escape through the closed window, it surrounds us with an oppressive heat. Daru wipes the sweat off his forehead with a handkerchief, then timidly presses the enter button. The file opens. At first glance, it looks like a resume. There's a photograph on the top right. The top left is name, age, height, weight, and other information. In the center is a long string of English text. Underneath that, there's something attached, like a scan of a newspaper clipping with a black and white photo. And then I know. I know exactly what the Jellyman in Jellyman's report means. Jellyman? Considering the bananas came back jellified and they were experimenting with humans? Seriously? I figured the jellification came from the banana traveling back in time until a state where it was sort of uh, still growing and was jellified because of that, but I guess I just don't know enough about bananas, but seriously? Oh my god! Jellyman's Report 10 Subject, James McCarthy, age 31, American C Program Stage 4, date of experiment, 2005 the 28th of January, 13.05. Kurisu bends over Daru's shoulder, reading the contents out loud. Results, error, human is dead, 
mismatched. That again. It is believed that due to infinite compression by supergravity, the subject could not endure passage through the singularity inside the Kerr black hole. April 3rd, 1921, New York City, an unidentified man was discovered dead in an alley off Union Square. The right half of his body was embedded in a nearby wall. So they tr okay, so he tried to travel and appear somewhere, but he kind of ended up in a wall? It sounds like Carice was reading the newspaper article at the end. The man's body was completely jellified. Chapter 3 Butterfly Effects Divergence. Let's go!